As some of you may know, when you look through the girls and Love Live School Festival All-Stars, you can listen to each girl's theme. That's 27 themes in total, so why don't we go over each theme and rate them? Time to get triggered! I'll be looking through each theme for every girl and I'll rate them. There are alternate themes for each girl, which is a bit a, a little different version of the song, which could be a different pace or changing of instrumentals. But you can't listen to them if you go through the stories, or sometimes you are required to find the ultra rare version of that card and listen to their story. But there is going to be an alternate version for each girl, but I will not be looking at in this video, I'll be looking at the ones you can get just by going to their page. Perhaps someday I can look at the alternate versions if you guys are interested, although they're not a whole lot different. The rating system I use is a revised system from before. I used the rarities from the Love Life Squall Festival game, where I used the rarities from the worst, which is being the normal, which is N, and rare, super rare, special super rare, and ultra rare. I'm gonna redo this because I felt like it was... It could look a bit harsh or some people might not understand the system as well. But I will still try to use it here. So each of these ratings will be equated to the school grading system of A, B, C, D, and F. Where an A is kind of an ultra rare, where a normal is kind of an F. I'm giving a score from 1 to 100, which will provide a rare to an ultra rare rating. So this is the more or less the guideline. So if you're interested in if I rated it something like a 76, what does that mean? Well, it's a super rare or, or like a C in terms of school. So it's all right, it's acceptable, but it could definitely be better. The most important part of rating a song is to simply put how much you like the song. I'll denote this as the score. If I like the song, it'll get a higher rating, and if I don't, it'll get a low rating. The other thing I'll be considering is how well the song matches the character's personality and characteristics. I think it's crucial when making a theme that is able to match a character, but that also can be a good theme that would be sensible for the game itself. The fittingness of the theme is not the most important part of judging the song or the theme itself, but it's there to help me distinguish between themes that I think are about similar in terms of quality or how much I like it. The game is a lively and rhythm game, therefore I feel the theme should reflect that. Unfortunately, that sets up a few girls for failure in that section as they're not that kind of personality, but I digress. The fittingness is not the most important thing, it's how much I like it. And that will be the dominant factor in these ratings, but of course, I will bend it a little bit depending on how fitting I think it is. So let's go over my 100% correct opinions that can't possibly be wrong. So it's not a surprise for me that the lowest rated theme for me is Kanata. Why is that? Well, it has nothing to do with her personally. I really like her voice and I love My Own Fairy Tale, which is one of her solo songs. The issue is that the thing kind of has to match her characteristics or personality. Kanata is a very sleepy girl, so in order to get a thing that makes sense for her, it has to be a slower and light song that could pull one to sleep. It's a fine song and it matches Kanata very well, I just don't care for a song that could put me to sleep. I would have loved it if it matched more of My Own Fairy Tale more, which is just, well, I like that song a lot more. It could be a tad faster and have a more like spice to it. I usually like faster and feel good songs. This song makes me feel tired, though it makes a lot of sense for a theme for Kanata, and it does match her first solo song a lot. I'm just not a big fan of songs that could put you to sleep. Next up, we have Nico, and I think Nico's theme is pretty fitting for her as this character, and it's a pretty fitting theme for the game. It's a bit more lively and energetic, with a bit of a hint of a goofy feeling. It's suitable for Nico. But I still don't think this song goes full Nico. Not necessarily that I would like that, but it doesn't feel like it's 100% going into the Nico personality. Perhaps a Nico Nico knee in like an instrumental form could help this song feel more Nico like. As for the theme itself, it's not my style. Most things Nico really isn't. It's not bad, but it kind of feels like it came from a very, very silly kitty arcade game. And I guess the game itself could be skewed to be kind of like that, but I, I don't really think it's that great of a fit. And for me, I just, I'm not a huge fan of this theme overall. In 25th place, we have Kanan, and Kana is going full jazz, more calm and smooth kind of jazz. This is the kind of music I would expect to hear in a coffee shop or a bookstore. Her solo song, 
also goes the jazzy route, and I can respect that this song pays respect to that. Kinda could be classy, and I don't mind jazz. It doesn't exactly have pizzazz though, it's got a nice flow that I like, but I was hoping there would be more to the theme, maybe like saxes or trumpets to liven it up a bit more. I'm sure some people would love this song, but it's just overall okay to me. It doesn't bug me, but this is some definitely something I wouldn't go out and play on my phone. The kind of jazz songs I like have a bit more, I don't know if I want to say personality, but a little bit more energy to it, and this just seems a bit lacking in that department. Knows Me's theme is a gentle and calm one. Knows Me often works in the background trying to make things work. She doesn't always make herself known, and when she does, she really does. This does not match her, um, her washi washi thing, but Beyond that, I guess it's a somewhat fitting theme. Those of me is sometimes gentle, she's caring and selfless, and when you see a volunteer at the temple, you kind of get that feeling from her. This theme feels a bit fitting for someone who also likes fortune telling, so I guess that also goes with that as well. It's nice and calm, but personally, this pace is too slow for my liking. The instrumental's nice and fine, but that's about all I can really say about it. It's not something that I would personally would go out of my way to listen to. Daya has a very traditional song as her theme. It's pretty lovely and gentle. It's nice and it brings you a, a very oriental kind of environment. It's well done and it complements how Daya is the sense of the traditional Japanese beauty. That being said, I'm not that interested in traditional music. Furthermore, I don't even know if this theme is the most fitting. It does keen to how traditional she can be. She can even you seen playing the traditional instrument in the anime. Though, when I think of Daya, I also think about her pupu tasewas and sometimes her very strict training regiments. Also, as a theme for the main menu, uh, it kind of feels very off, you know? This is a fun modern rhythm game, not a traditional Japanese simulation game. It would be better if they had a theme that had traditional roots, but it also had modern elements in there since Dai isn't only about being a traditional girl. Azilla as a group kind of does that to some degree, or maybe something more like what Mai Mai Tonight kind of had would have been really nice for Daya. Anyways, I think I think it's great that it, we have a theme that's extremely different and that's like this, but I just feel like it's too, too traditional for me. But the fact that it was traditional bumps it up a few spots. The first theme to hit the super rare ranking is Yo's, and Yo's theme is fast and full of her Yosuro energy. I honestly not the biggest fan of the intro, to be honest. The rest of the song is much better for me though. I'm not entirely sure what kind of song will be perfect for Yo, but this does match her lively spirit, and the background instrumentals are overall pretty nice. I think it's a decent theme. I know some people might like this name a lot more, but I feel like it's a little, I don't know, I don't know if chaotic is the right word, I just feel like it's a little messy kind of, like it's kind of the similar feeling what I have about her solo song Beginner Sailing. If you like that song, I'm sure you probably like this name, as this theme kind of has a decent, amount of, a decent amount of similarities between it, but for me personally, I think it's okay, but... I don't know, there's other things I would rather listen to. Ice theme is definitely lively, but I feel that it's a bit too much and it suffers a bit from that. It reminds me a good amount of Nico's theme, minus a bit of the silliness and add a little bit more energy on top of what there already is. I do enjoy Ice theme a little bit, and it does mirror Metro Goings in terms of its energy, but not really much beyond that. I feel like they could have drawn more from that solo song which would have made me really like the song. I feel so wrong for putting her theme solo, but it just feels like a kind of a theme for a silly arcade game at really most, which I guess this game could be called that, but honestly I feel like this theme falls pretty flat for me. So of course, it makes sense that Rico's has a piano. She plays piano, and she's a pretty reserved character, but as time goes on she becomes more involved with the group. The song matches Rico pretty well, I, but I can't say this is just Rico's theme and it can only be Rico's theme just by listening to it. It feels like it's a like in something that is undeniably a Rico thing. I'm not entirely sure what that is 
really be on like piano but that is something that I feel like I don't really notice too much of course there's the piano in there but most songs have a piano in there so that doesn't mean a whole lot it has a melody that is closer to a well-mannered girl like Rico is so I guess that helps the theme itself is decent I'm not in love with it it's another calm and relaxing song and it's a fine listen and it's a little better than some of the other ones but still wouldn't go out of my way to necessarily listen to this one Next up we have Emma and Emma's theme is another very relaxed and harmonious kind of song. Much like Evergreen this theme mirrors Emma's image of being a girl who loves nature. The song is light and calming, a perfect song to listen to when you just want to chill. This is very very fitting for Emma. I'm not very big on these kind of very chill relaxed songs so personally I think it's an alright theme. It's a little better than the ones before it. And I'm glad this song fits her very well, and I got no complaints for it. I think this makes sense for her. The French horn, or at least I think that's what it's playing, works very well, and I'm surprised how well it works in this theme. I like the flutes, and the solo is pretty good. Overall, it's a good theme, and I don't really have a whole lot of complaints here. Adios theme is a bit on the slow side, but it has a nice piano. No. Hanyu doesn't really have to do anything with the piano, but I guess plenty of songs at the piano, so I guess that doesn't mean a whole lot. The theme makes me picture more of a kind of a gentle girl, and I guess this can go with Hanyu. But I don't get a theme that makes me think of her passion for Gohan and idols, which is another part of her personality that many people enjoy when she goes crazy over those kind of things. Now, I don't think that's necessarily the best reflection of her as a character, but that is definitely something I feel like they could have paid a little homage to, but I don't know if that was that important. The song is pretty decent overall, but I think it gets a lot better when it picks up much later in the song. It's a bit more lacking in the beginning, especially compared to the songs that it's nearby, but when it does pick up, I enjoy the song a lot more. That is when I enjoy listening to it, so it feels like I'm kind of just waiting for that part when I'm listening to the song. When the melody picks up, it gets some flavor, and that's what gets it up into about this area. Next up, we got Hanamaru, and yes, I am putting all of these themes that are I have trouble distinguishing right next to each other because they are all relatively similar to me in terms of how much I like it because they have a kind of basic kind of theme that's all very calm and relaxed. Here we have Hanamaru who is a gentle spirit, and as we know she is from a temple, she's kind, and this theme reflects her image. It's a calm and pleasant theme. The tempo is not slow and the instruments make a nice melody. I honestly like all the parts of the song. Unlike Emma, Hanamaru's theme is a bit faster while retaining the overall heart of the song. All of those themes though have their moments. I just think Hanamaru has a slight edge over say Emma's. Next up we have a very bouncy and light theme. Ruby's theme is made for really a cute and playful kind of girl. In that sense, I guess it does make me think a little bit about Ruby. I'm not really a big fan of the first half of the song, but I like it a lot more when it picks up in the second half. The melody picks up and it blends so well. Overall, it works for Ruby. It does make a decent amount of sense for a main main theme as well. The piano is so repetitive though, it's kind of bothersome as it only really like plays about two notes for a decent amount of song. I know the bass does that too, but that's normal for bass and the piano is more audible and more noticeable so you kind of really notice that repetition a lot. Since I'm more or less only a fan of the second half of the song and okay, I'm more or less okay or indifferent with the first half, the song fails to truly truly captivate me but I do like the second half a good amount and the first half is not that bad so it gets up into this area. And we get to Kasumi's and oh jeez, this one is just maximized the silliness. It's got a goofy rhythm and feels like you're in the kid's playroom when you're listening to the song. It fully goes for that nonsensical feeling and honestly, it does a pretty good job with that. It's such a Kasumi song. I can easily imagine Kasumi trying to do something mischievous when you hear this theme. This theme doesn't really bug me that much, which I find honestly find a little weird but 
I also kind of find it funny because they have the whistles blowing in the background and I just keep matching Kasumi blowing into the whistles really hard and making a really goofy face. It's way too goofy to be anything beyond Kasumi's theme, but I honestly think this is a kind of a, a nice to listen to if you want a really goofy song. I honestly can't believe I'm putting the song so high and I'm sure some of you will be shaking your heads when you see this. And honestly, I kind of am too. But I think it's actually not too bad to be honest so I guess good job Kotori's theme is actually pretty decent I gotta say Kotori is a pure hearted girl who loves to make dresses for lives she's often cheerful and there to lighten up everyone this theme kind of feels like it's almost from like a carnival or like a children's theme park I'm not entirely sure it also kind of sounds like those pianos played at some ballparks it's a nice touch though that if you go about 23 seconds in, you will notice a bird chirping in the song. If you didn't already know what kotsuri means, that means little bird, and that's often why you might find a gray little bird on her bags, because that's what kotsuri means. So it's nice that they pay homage to that. I'm not really sold if this theme is really the most fitting for her. You can't just say it's fitting just because they added the bird chirping, but I think that's still a nice feature to add, and it's a nice way to put a little touch on that that can only be for kotsuri. Overall, I think it's a decent song, not my favorite, but it's definitely pretty nice to listen to. Now we finally get into the special super rare songs. So Umi's theme is very lively, which is more akin to her soul song, Watashi Shita wa Mirai no Hana. Excuse my Japanese there. The guitars and drums make the song feel a bit rock and roll like. It's definitely a plus that it mirrors that song, which is a good song in that. The thing is, that solo doesn't really make me think of Umi, therefore this song does not too. But I guess they have to pay homage to one of them, I guess, either her personality or the song. When I think Umi, I think a kind of a traditional Japanese beauty, I think of her archery skills, her stage fright, her terminator with girly or sensitive things, her strict and serious attitude towards the goofiness of other girls, and so on. The solo song takes some of the aspects off, I suppose. But it only catches like the cool side of Umi, which I feel is a smaller part of her character. I honestly prefer the cool side of Umi to be honest, but I don't think that it's the best representation of her. Anyways, I think it is a pretty good song. I like the tempo and how it has a bit of that oriental kind of feeling to it, which again is paying homage to her solo. It's not the most amazing thing in my opinion, but I definitely like it more than a lot of other things. For her number 12, Aimu's theme is just so fitting for her. It feels so Aimu like. It's exactly what I imagined for her. It mirrors her hard work and sincere attitude. The speed is well paced and it matches her never ending determination to make herself the best idol she can be. I don't have a whole lot to say beyond that. I just find it really fitting and this is pretty much what I imagine. When I listen to this, I think Aimu. And I like the theme too. It's not super amazing, but it wins a lot of points in my heart for being the perfect theme for her. Ellie's theme is a very light and simple one. It's got a high-pitched melody and I enjoy it. It's... I'm not entirely sure what this has to do with Ellie. Ellie is Russian and I don't... I honestly don't know any Russian songs so I don't know how that helps. And it's also not like her solo song which is a more slow and dramatic song. Her personality starts out with being strict but as time goes on she becomes more playful and kind of a role model. And I guess this song has no attachment to anything about Ellie as far as I can tell. I guess as a thing for a main menu, it's fine, it, it definitely does the job, but I feel like the song should have a bit more energy to pump you up to play the game. Overall, I like the theme a good amount. It just feels like something could be added that would make it undeniably Ellie's theme. Horika's theme is based off her endless Fighto Dayo energy. She's always determined and passionate. She's not always a She's not a quitter, and the trumpet really emphasizes her fighting spirit. I'm not entirely sure why it's there, but the theme does have a call out to Snow Halation. Because why not? I guess she did do the Todo Kete. So, sure? It's an important song for her and the muse, and Snow Halation is a great song, so I'm not complaining. It, it, but and I'm not entirely sure why she had to be the one to have that or why that's so like honoka like the theme itself is very honoka like though but i think it's too honoka like for a main menu theme there's too many trumpets it's kind of like 
in your face with Honoka's energy, if that makes sense. It's a nice theme overall, and I like the second half a lot. That's when I really really like listening to that theme. The beginning half is just sounds like it's too Honoka-like for me. But the second half is really nice, and that's why it moved up so high on this list. I honestly find this one odd. I, for some reason, really like Shizuku's theme. The piano and the overall theme is just so playful. It's bouncy and cheerful, much like Shizuku herself. Okay, I'm not sure if she's bouncy, but she can be very cheerful. Now, as the song for the main menu, it's actually not too bad. To be honest, it's got a energy, but I think it's a bit too lighthearted to make sense for a rhythm game. But nevertheless, I enjoy this theme, and it makes me feel good when I listen to it. And I'm pretty sure most people won't agree, and yes, I'm a little shocked that it's this high. But I enjoy the melody, it's a fun and cute song, and it's not too slow for me, so I honestly like it. And I have no things to complain too much about it. Cotton's theme is classy and light. Kind of known for being more mature and sexy. I like this theme though as it appeals more to Cotton's classy style. The brass and the piano lead the very stylish song. The song isn't exactly what I would necessarily match up with Cotton, but it's a great song nevertheless. The theme isn't amazing in any aspects for me, but overall it's just a really good and cohesive song. I like the piano solo and the instruments blend really well. The guitar stays tame and the trumpets only add to the melody. It's not necessarily what I would chose for her theme as I think most people would be interested in her more mature aspects, but I still think it's a decent theme overall and I enjoy listening to it. And number 7 we have Yoshiko or Yohane. Yoshiko has the most unique theme. It's by far the most different stylistically and instrumentally, of course, it makes sense though. Yoshiko has a very different and unique personality. Yoshiko, or Yohane, is known for being a fallen angel. Her theme is so dramatic and it matches her persona of being with little demons. It's really well done and I really like the violin and piano. The song builds a very dark atmosphere and it's suitable for Yohane. Does this make sense to be in an idle rhythm game? No. But it makes sense because it's for Yoshiko. Plus the second half speeds up and it only makes the song more interesting. But how dare I put it in 7th place, right? Well, I still think it's a nice song, but I'm not the biggest fan of Nessa Yoshiko's style, so it's not as high as some other people might put it, but I still think it deserves a good spot as it's so fitting and it's well done. To be completely honest, I'm surprised I put it this high, because when I first listened to it, I thought it was, eh, it's okay, but as I listened to it more, this has actually grown on to me a good amount. Now, Chica has a bit of a mix of kind of classy themes with kind of that Honoka energy kind of style, which kind of really keens into Chica's personality. It's still got those trumpets that blur in the background, but basically it's just a more classy version of Honoka's theme with the light percussion and chimes. It's lighthearted and it's got a nice flow. Compared to Honoka's theme, I like this theme overall a tad bit more, but Honoka has the second half which is probably a little bit better overall. This theme doesn't really appeal to Chica's stubbornness to succeed as an idol, but I wouldn't call Chica elegant. It feels like something more fitting for like Kanan, which makes me think why is it a little bit more classy, but that's not necessarily the importance of when we rate these themes. I just like the song and I think it's pretty decent. I don't know if this is undeniably perfect for Chica, but it definitely appeals to parts of her personality, so I'll give it a pass. I have to give a lot of props to Rin's theme. I tend to like Rin's solo songs because they are full of energy and joy. This theme pulls heavily on Rin's solo songs Koi no Signo Rin 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 and Kuri Nin Miracle. It's just awesome how it really pulls from both those songs and really helps shape this wonderful theme. And the theme itself is just really good. So it gets major points for just pulling from both soul songs and not just one. I really like both of the songs a lot, so that helps even more. It's just what I expected from a theme for Rin and it's just a good theme even for the main menu. But there's probably better ones out there for at least the main menu theme. My expectations were succeeded with this theme. It did such a wonderful job of combining both the two songs into a theme, 
and making it seamless. It's just a well done one and I like the theme so major props to whoever did this theme. For Madi's theme, I really really like the way it starts. It's pumped full of energy and the instruments make themselves known, kind of like how Madi does in the anime. It's also got that element of goofiness as we all know that Madi likes to be goofy all the time with her jokes and her English. The middle of the theme really doubles down on the goofy elements and the end goes more of the kind of the classy parts that she has. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the middle and the end part of the themes, although I still think it's a good job of doing fitting and it's still pretty decent. I just wish it was more like the beginning of the theme because that's the part that I really enjoy listening to. I still really like the theme overall and you know it's number 4 for a reason and it's just a fun listen but it could be even better if they really double down on what the beginning was like. For the first song that gets the ultra rare rating, we have Rina, and for whatever reason, I like to compare a lot to Ellie's. Yes, they sound very different, but the instrumental lead kind of gives me a similar vibe. Rina's is a bit more like what I imagine from Ellie's, but isn't as light or floaty, if that even makes sense. Rina's theme has more depth to it, there are more than just one or two instruments. And the sounds are a little bit, a little more electronic, which makes sense since Rina is associated with technology, as shown through her Rina Cha board, as well as her enjoyment through things on computers. This is just a really nice theme, and I just really like the song. It's really catchy. I like the flow and the rhythm, and it's just a really nice song to listen to. And I think it does a pretty good job as being a theme for the main menu as well. So maybe it's just me, but. I genuinely like this one and I think it's a pretty dang fitting song for Rina. For my second favorite theme, it's gotta go to Maki. Maki has an excellent theme which has two different styles. A fast and more dramatic feeling created by the bass and another style which is a bit more delicate and elegant in flavor. The theme is based off her personality which can be simply described as a sundere. She's got two sides of her, one shown as she plays the piano, another side which she shows her cool side, and this song does both. It can't be Maki's theme without having a piano, front and center. As a main menu theme, uh, I, I don't really see it that much, but I like Maki a lot and I think this theme fits her so well. The bass feels like it comes straight out of her soul, dotting, but it doesn't feel like a theme that would be for a school idol game. It would have to be a bit, a little more lighthearted than this. The song is kind of BB like and as we know she is from BB but again it's not really an all-star kind of thing. Overall it's an excellent theme that mirrors it really well and I happen to find it pretty catchy and I enjoy listening to the song. And we finally get to my favorite theme of all of the themes. So the best theme for me is Setsuna Yuki and I get it. Oh my goodness Setsuna Yuki winning again but honestly I genuinely think this is the best theme out there. It's my favorite to listen to and I just find it so fitting. Frankly, this theme felt so appropriate for the game that I didn't even notice when I, ha I happened to select her. I just thought this was the actual theme for the game because it was that fitting. It's fun and exciting and that matches Setsuna so well. She is lively, energetic, she's always motivated to become the best idol and her smile lights up the screen. She's determined and the electric guitars in the theme perfectly depict her image. I really enjoy this theme so much. And I know that Maki's theme is also really good, but I had to give this first place because this is so much more fitting for the game as well as for Setsuna. I just think this theme is just overall the best theme in the game, and that's why it is number one. This music was excellently crafted and just a great theme for Setsuna. So congratulations to Setsuna for having the best theme. Now, for those who care, I went and checked the trends amongst the ratings. By taking their placings and averagings, I got the averages for the groups, subunits, and the years for the girls. I have Aqua with the lowest overall for the groups, and I have Muse being in the middle and Ichigaku being the highest. But it's really not that much of a difference. For most of the subunits, you don't notice a, a very extreme difference, except for Azuna and Mazella. Mazella has been my favorite subunit so far. So it's kind of odd to see they have the worst average, although I guess the themes don't really have that Azuna kind of feel, so I guess that makes sense. And Azuna, I like them, I like all the girls, but we still need to see more from the subunits. We only had the two songs and they're decent, but they're definitely not top songs for me. 
But I like what I see so far from Asuna, so we'll have to see what that will lead to. And then for the the years, the first year, second years, and third years, more or less the trend is the younger the better, I suppose. Don't take that the wrong way though. So that is my ranking for the themes in Love Lies Squirrel Festival All Stars. Since this is a BS anime video, of course there is a poll. In this poll, you guys can voice your opinion to tell me that I'm wrong. The poll is segmented into two sections. The first section is for those who want to participate but don't want to spend a lot of time doing it. All you need to do is indicate your top three themes and you are good. The second section is for the more dedicated voters. Here you can rate the songs using the, the scale from 0 to 100. You can do this for any to all the themes, so if you just want to rate 1 or 20 of them, I guess you could. For those who complete and all sections, I will give you a bigger shout out in the video, so make sure you put in your name if you want to have credit for that. The link to the poll is in the description. That is more or less for this video. What do you guys think? Who has the best theme? Who has the worst theme? What should I rate next? Why isn't Saint Snow in this game yet? Let me know what you guys think. I got a best girls poll still open for the three groups and as well as songs you want to animate Love Life Squad Festival All Stars. At some point I'll close them. Not entirely sure yet, but the links to those will be in the description as well. And if you're interested in listening to all the themes in full, I have a link in the poll itself or go ahead and check my YouTube playlist. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to catch you guys in another video soon.